Hi, welcome to Apex Math. Today we're going to talk about factoring trinomials and we're going to do the hard case where the leading coefficient, the number that's in front of the x squared term here, is something other than 1. Lots of times teachers will teach this in a confusing way to, to students and they'll teach trial and error and there's a very simple easy way to do this and we're going to get to it quickly, go through a few simple steps and we'll have you factoring trinomials like this in no time. The first step is to realize what your A, your B, and your C term are. So the A term is the number that sits in front of the x squared term. The B term is what sits in front of the x. And always remember to circle the sign that goes with the number. In algebra, positives and negatives, addition and subtraction, they're the same thing. So we always have to make sure whenever we're looking at a coefficient, a number in front of a variable, that we look at their sign as well as the number itself. And our C term is negative 12. So we're going to write that out. A is equal to 2, B is equal to negative 5, and C is equal to negative 12. And we're going to write out each of the steps that we need to do. Step number one. We are going to multiply the A term times the C term. So we're going to do A times C, which is 2 times negative 12, which gives us negative 24. If you remember when you do this, when the leading coefficient is just 1, you don't have to multiply it times that A term. Of course, if you did, it wouldn't change the steps because you'd just be multiplying by 1. It wouldn't change that value. Step 2 is to do what you normally do when you factor, which is you're going to think of two numbers that multiply to give you the number that you just found from step 1, negative 24, and they must add to give the middle term, the B term, which is negative 5. So we need to think of two numbers that multiply to give us negative 24, but add to give us negative 5. So what I do is I go through the factors of 24, so if I think about what multiplies together to give me 24. 1 times 24. Then I usually add and subtract them and I see if I get a number that looks like this. If I add them, 1 plus 24, I get 25. If I subtract 24 minus 1, I get 23. Neither of which is a 5. So that one's not going to work. So then I'm going to look at the next factor, 2 and 12. If I add 2 and 12, I get 14. If I subtract 2 and 12, I get 10. Again, neither of which is a 5, so that's not going to help me either. My next factor is 3 and 8. If I add 3 and 8, I get 11, but if I subtract 3 and 8, I get 5. So that's how I know that that is the factor that I'm going to choose, is 3 and 8. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write my negative 24, and I'm going to put my 3 and my 8, and I'm going to remember that they have to multiply to give me a negative number. In order to get a negative number when you multiply, one of these two must be negative. So which one do I want to make negative? Well, look, when I add them, I have to get a negative 5. So that means the bigger of the two numbers must be negative if I'm going to get a negative 5 when I add them. So that means the negative goes on the 8, the positive goes on the 3. If we want to verify, if we have a positive 3 times a negative 8, you can see we get a negative 24. Check. And if we have a positive 3 plus a negative 8, we get a negative 5. Check. So we met our two conditions that we needed for factoring. Now step three, you can kind of step, think of step three as undoing 
step one. In step one, we multiply by that A term. Like I said, something we don't normally do when we do basic simple factoring. So we're going to undo it by dividing by A. So we're going to take the two numbers we just found and we're going to divide them both by A. So positive 3 divided by 2, our A term, and negative 8 divided by 2. Step 4 is to simplify. And 3 over 2 does not reduce. And negative 8 over 2 reduces to negative 4 over 1. Now, if it reduces to a whole number, like negative 8 divided by 2 equals negative 4, still write it as a fraction, negative 4 over 1, because we're going to need these in fraction form in order to do our last step. If you get an improper fraction, also leave it as an improper fraction. Once we get our number simplified, step five is what's called bottoms up. Bottoms up is where we take and we put an x on the bottom, on the numerator of those two fractions that we just simplified. And then our factored form is bottoms up, which means we write the bottom first with the x, and then we include the top, the numerator, after that. So this is 2x, then we use the sign of whatever sign the number is, so this is going to be a plus 3. Our next one is going to be 1x, and the sign was a minus, so minus 4. So our final factored form is 2x plus 3 times 1x minus 4. And that's it. Those are the five simple steps for factoring a trinomial when your leading coefficient is something other than 1. Just to review the steps, multiply the A times the C. Step 2, think of two numbers that multiply to give you the number you just found and add to give you the number in the middle, the B term. Step 3, divide both those numbers by your A. Step 4, reduce those fractions to simplest form but keeping them as fractions. Step 5, stick an X on the denominator, bottoms up, put the denominator first, plus or minus the numerator, and you're all done. I hope you will join us for future math videos at Apex Math.